Hey everyone, Matt Crump with Matt Crump Ministries and hashtag God's Got This. And I'd like to welcome you this week to our theme, which is running after what? I've been thinking about a couple of things with this theme this week. And have you ever like tried running somewhere with goggles on that were all fogged up? Maybe not always, but let's just imagine, right? Fogged up goggles running over the place. Or maybe if you have glasses like me and they're all smudged up and you're trying to see something, you just can't see it, right? Or maybe... Uh, maybe if you're a welder or something, you got one of those big old masks you pull it on, the only way you can see out of it is if you're actually welding and it's bright enough to see, because without it, it's dim and dark, right? Uh, in life, there's, there's lots of times we're running blind in life with things that we can't see, things that we don't see, obstacles we have in our own lives, and we've been scratching up our lenses, have fogged up lenses, and sometimes it's great just to have clarity, right? Just to be able to see things and to know exactly what we're going after and where we're running to. I, I saw a story uh, recently about two different men, and it's quite interesting, both CEOs of large companies, and uh, we'll call them Hal and Sal. How about that? All right, so, so Hal, he has a great company, and he's really focused on running a streamlined business. Time management is, is key for him, right? So they have a huge contract getting ready to come up, and it's one of the biggest that they've had in a long time. They needed it for the company. So Hal just goes crazy with everybody. He says, pulls everybody in, decides to say, look, we are going to have serious time management. You team are going to do this. You're going to do this. You're going to do this. He lays everything out, gives them exact timelines, exactly what they're supposed to do. And this is where we have it done. And we need to have it to this company. If we don't do it right and we don't do it on time, then we're going to lose the contract and we might lose the business. Right? So then Hal starts running the business, doing all this stuff with these people, and he's really just big about the time management stuff, constantly looking at time management. And there's nothing wrong with time management, right? Except in this case, a little bit, Hal was having some issues. So, so what Hal did was he started having these meetings with everybody about every couple of days and pulled them in. They had a deadline, probably about a week or so, and he'd bring them every couple of days to check up, which is fine, but he's doing it a few times a day. And if they weren't within the time parameters of what they had to do, and they didn't meet the deadlines of everything they were doing, he came down hard on everybody because they weren't focusing on their time well, they might have been goofing off at work, might have been on Facebook too much or whatever. He has all kinds of things that he would insinuate when people were doing things wrong. All right, so they got everything together, got everything done in time, and they were able to get the product to the company for the bid. And at the end of the day, the company chose another company that was smaller, had less uh, people, had less resources, uh, but they chose this other company. All right, let's go to Sal, right? Hal, Sal. Okay, Sal. So Sal owns a company, and he owns a pretty big company. And the company was getting ready to have a, a major anniversary, their 25th anniversary. So they wanted to do something special in the marketplace to really uh, seal their, their dominance in what they do, their expertise in what they do. So he wanted to have a great product launch that he could do on the 25th anniversary. So... He calls his team in and says, I'd like to do this. The 25th anniversary happens here. I'm going to do a big show, a big event, and I'll release an entire product line that's all brand new, new stuff, new technology, and have it be one of our things for our 25th anniversary. All right, so he launched everything, started doing his work with everybody. He had time management skills. They were working and working as hard as they could, and then something interesting happened. Sal realized that they were not going to make the deadline. The 25th anniversary was coming mighty close, and all the product lines they had were all not done, halfway done, three quarters done, nothing was completely done, and it didn't look like everything was gonna get done at one time. So instead of going crazy like Hal would have and, and crack the whip and told everybody what to do and hurry up and get this thing done, he, he looked and made an observation. The observation was, if we're gonna have a launch for our big anniversary, and we wanna do something special, and we're running into a situation with time. You guys are great at what you do. We just don't have enough time to do it. So instead of pro doing an entire product line, let's make one incredible thing. One incredible product with new technology. We'll launch it, and after we launch that, we'll have plenty of time to do the rest. So they pulled all the resources together. Everybody from all different teams got together. They knocked it out, they did it, and it was a huge success. It was fantastic. So how? loses the contract, Sal had an incredible time. Both dealing with time management, both dealing with deadlines. So two guys 
same type of scenarios, two different outcomes, all because of the way that one person looked at something over the way another person looked at something. One person saw an opportunity and an advantage. Another person saw obstacles, deadlines, and issues. It's like what I said at the beginning with those glasses and goggles and these things are all scratched up and fogged up and you just can't see. There's just not clarity there. It doesn't mean that Hal was a, a bad guy altogether. It doesn't mean that he was a horrible uh, boss. He must be okay because he had a big company. Um, but, you know, he made some choices and decisions that were not the best for his life. This week's theme is, is running after what? And my question this week is, what are you running after? What kind of clarity do you have in your life for what you've been called to do. Now, a lot of times, there are things in our lives that can be an issue that would hinder where you're going. It could be your time management. Uh, it could be clarity or focus. Uh, it could be the way we work with people, don't work with people, all types of scenarios that uh, could fill in the blank there to be an obstacle for what you might be running after. Sometimes people are not necessarily running after something, but might be running away from something. Um, a lot of times in life when we are dealing with issues in our lives that are painful, hurtful, um, sometimes there's things that are just, uh, just let you down. You feel like there should be more and there's not, so sometimes you can get depressed and, and, and held back and your potential doesn't seem like it's reached and sometimes you get to the point where it's just squashed so much that you don't care anymore. There's so much more for you than that. There is so much work that the Lord has available for you that he's equipped you with. Everyone watching this has a talent, a skill, and ability. There's something that God's given you specifically to do on this planet while you're here to make a difference. There is something that you can run after, something you can run for, something you can run to. And when we have the clarity of what that is, when we have an understanding of who that is, when we have the ability to, to sit back and rest and examine what happens in our lives, like Sal did, when he had a chance to say, wait a minute, everything's going crazy here right now. Uh, things are just going too fast. I've got good people. What's wrong? And that was basically just running after too much. He had to bring it back, and it ended up being even better. Sometimes less is more. Uh, so it doesn't always have to be the big stuff to be a win. So Hal and Sal, two guys both um, accomplished men, both have made it big because they were in charge of big companies, so they weren't dumb. But they did have differences of thought processes and opinions as to what things were happening in their lives and their businesses, and they were both running after something. But one person chose to examine some things a bit differently. I wonder what made Sal different than Hal in that situation. The interesting part about what made him different was the relationship aspect. When Hal chose to not deal with the relation side of the other company and really learn about who they were, what they liked, what they wanted, um, you know, know somebody's names in the company, uh, call them once in a while and say, hey, how's it going? Things are going great here. Can't wait to share with you what's getting ready to happen. Uh, instead, it was deadline, deadline, deadline. Here's exactly what you wanted. Here's everything we've got. How do you like it? And they said, not so much. Right. So uh, it's really easy in our lives to get swamped with things around us and forget the focus and the clarity of what we're supposed to be doing. What are you running after today? What is happening in your life that you're running to? Sometimes people are running from, away from. Uh, there's a difference between running away and running to. And God has called each and every one of us to do something specifically. You have an incredible purpose and plan in life. Uh, that you are the only one that can do. Now, many times we have enemies, uh, uh, one major one, but we do have lots of different things that happen that try to hold us back and stop us from achieving the biggest goals and, and the best opportunities that are available for us and others around us. It's about other people as well. We get a chance to, to be a blessing to, to our world, right? So it may not be like the world as an entire globe. Could be. But it could be your neighborhood, your office, your school, uh, where your world is, your impact. And you have an opportunity to make a difference there. If you don't have the difference made in your own life personally at first, it's hard to do that for everybody else. It's so important to have clarity on really what you're running after. And that really comes into a situation of knowing who you are and knowing whose you are, what your plan and purpose is for life, 
and then being able to effectively, clearly go after that. Because it can be a, a big impact. And sometimes things happen in our lives and we may have one plan and we hit a speed bump and things change. It happened to me and now I've hit a speed bump but the speed bump has put me in a different trajectory. I still have the same goal uh, but the, the tools have changed. And now I have an opportunity with new tools to, um, to reach people in a way I never could have before. It's pretty awesome. And the same thing could happen for you. So this week, I really just wanted to encourage you to think, what are you running after? Or what are you running from? Uh, what are you running to? Uh, there's, there's important understanding in every one of those questions that only you can answer yourself. You have an incredible opportunity to make an impact in the world. And the world sometimes doesn't treat us so well, making us want to give up. And I would encourage you, don't. Keep driving, keep pressing, keep pushing forward, and keep believing that you can have uh, an impact in somebody else's life. You're worth it. You know, I, I found it pretty funny this week, and not so much sometimes, but you know, you look back and things are funny. But this whole week I've been dealing with what are you running after and running to away and uh, the whole story there with Hal and Sal and time management. And, and uh, I have been uh, messing with time management problems this week. I wasn't able to do my podcast on Tuesday. Didn't do the God's Got This stories yesterday. Uh, I was at Duke Tuesday. I was able to go speak to somebody else who was dealing with cancer in their life and speak into their life and pray with another person over their family. And uh, we had family over last night. It's just a lot was happening. And at the end of the day, most people aren't going to sit there and at their cameras and at their uh, phones, rather, their computers, and think, where's Matt? So uh, I hope it gets to that point sometimes. People really want to see the information. But... At the end of the day, you know, it's all right. And I would rather be more like Sal than Hal and say, hey, what's the best thing to do here? Observe the situation, realize, hey, let's go after what's the best for us, use the best of our abilities, and let's hit a home run this way. And that's a really awesome way to look at things. And I wanted to give you that example and opportunity to think about what you're running after in your life. How are you running after in your life? What are you running to? And uh, how are you gonna do it? Uh, because as I've mentioned before, you're incredible. God's given you an ability to do something that only you can do. I've said that before, and it's so true. And you have the ability to knock things out of the park. It's just a matter of saying yes and getting some clarity as to what those things are, who you are, where you're supposed to go. And if you're in a situation where you're like, I don't know, Matt, exactly what I'm supposed to do. I don't have clarity in my life. Uh, I don't exactly know what the big picture is for me. I just kind of live my life, go to work, do my things. I have, I'm, I'm fine. I feel good. But... I don't know that I've had this big thing in my life yet. Um, if you'd like to talk about that, I'd love to. We've got a bunch of stuff we're getting ready to launch here at Matt Crump Ministries, and God's got this, and I'm excited to tell you uh, shortly some of those things are getting ready to happen. But I will be doing some coaching and group coaching here shortly, and uh, I'll, I'll just put a little feeler out there to let you know that if you're interested in something like that, uh, you can contact me, and I'll tell you more about that uh, at another time. But we're pretty excited about what's, what's happening there and what God is doing through the ministry and how he's reaching people's lives. And uh, we're just excited to have a chance to share it with you. And hopefully one day you'll be able to receive what we're teaching and be able to share it with other people. And man, we can just see a whole thing of hope and God's got this stuff going all around the world, right? So uh, if you'd like more information about what we're doing here at Matt Crump Ministries, you can go to godsgotthis.love. And uh, there's a bunch of resources available there. You can get signed up for our mailing list and a magazine that shares what happens throughout the week unless it's a week like this week. And then also, <laughs> you can also get uh, plugged in with part of our team, the God's Got This community. Uh, the way to do that is go to godsgotthis.love backslash donations. And uh, I hate to ask for it all the time, but it's so true. I mean, I look around these trees out here and money ain't growing off of it. And God has been doing some great things through our lives and touching people's lives. And a lot of you have, have called me up and asked for things and needed help or whatever. And I'm always there for you. Do the best I can. Don't mean that to, to be a, a, a guilt trip. I'm just saying I love to do it, but it's not free. And if you have an opportunity to be a part of that and to give monthly, it would be so fantastic. It would be fantastic. And it would be a, a part of what we're doing. And you can feel a part of what we're ha what, happening as well. And as you see some of these great victories getting ready to happen shortly with what, uh, what God's taking us to. Uh, it'd be awesome for you to be a part of it. So, again, God's got this dot love uh, backslash donations. Hate to make commercials, but that's just what it is. All right, so I want you to be encouraged this week. Remember that you are definitely called by God. There's a purpose and a plan for your life. 
that God's got this in your life, especially if you give it to him. He wants to give you clarity. If you don't have it, ask him. He'll show you. If you can't find it that way because your dog is a little messed up, find somebody to help you out. Say, I need some help with some clarity in my life. I guarantee you there's people out there that would help you. I would love to be one of them. So thanks again for being here this week. We love you so much. Thanks for your prayers. We're praying for you as well. And uh, until next week, God's got this. This world is lost and